Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in the glorious paradise of the Green Mountains of Vermont heading to 74 degrees today on this gorgeous summer day. This would be Friday, July 6, 2018 and so being Friday morning, I got to dive into my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant. A uh, little bit of slim pickings there, you know, being the holiday week and all that. Before I get into that though, guys, uh, I'm actually going to celebrate this beautiful day with some good news. Hallelujah. We, we have some good news here on this beautiful day other than the heat wave breaking not one not two not three I'm sorry yes three not one or not two but three pieces of good news showing up on my radar uh, yesterday hallelujah and where do we start we're gonna start over there in the shithole continent of of sub-Saharan Africa. What country was this even? Uh, over there. This is uh, finally something to smile about in the Doomosphere. Many versions of this story. Virtually all of the comments cheering the lions on. This is Time Magazine's spin on the story. A pride of lions killed and ate a group of rhino poachers who broke into a wildlife reserve. Hallelujah. Where is my applause button? I need to get an applause button. <clears throat> Take it away. Time Magazine and brighten our day. A group of rhino poachers were eaten by a pride of lions in Kenton on the Sea according to the owner of the South African Wildlife Reserve where the incident happened. The remains of what appears to be three bodies were discovered on the Simbuya Game Reserve along with high-power rifles, uh, owner Nick Fox said. Fox said the poachers' mangled remains are suspected to have been eaten by a pride of six lions who were on the reservation to protect the endangered and highly targeted rhinos who were hunted for their horns. Good for them. I'm in, the, uh, in my eco-Nazi roundup, I'm going to talk about how they're using attack dogs more and more in game reserves, but I like the idea of attack lions. Fuck the dog. Uh, so it appears the poachers entered the reserve with a slew of weapons, including a high-powered rifle with a silencer, an axe, wire cutters, and food supplies for a number of days. Um, Fox, who said the, the reserve has had previous run-ins with poachers, said the supplies found are all the hallmarks of, quote, a gang intent on killing rhinos and removing their horns. Um, the wildlife reserve's owners became aware that something was wrong when anti-poaching dogs, okay, they're using dogs and lions, when anti-poaching dogs alerted a handler who then heard a loud commotion coming from the lions. <laughs> so, there appeared to be human remains and poaching weapons near the lions, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> As of Thursday, it is not clear exactly how many poachers were killed. And then the BBC weighing in on the same story Lions eat rhino poachers on South African game reserves. So uh, let's see for a little background information. Uh, there has been a, a rise in poaching in Africa 
in recent years uh, to feed growing demand for rhino horn in Asia. In China, Vietnam, and elsewhere, rhino horn is believed to have aphrodisiac qualities. Yes. Uh, and the bottom line, we're not sure, according to um, to Fox, the guy, this guy Fox, quote, we're not sure how many there were. There's not much left of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good news coming out of uh, the shithole country of, of South Africa today. But of course, uh, we have some good news coming out of the shithole country of our, our own shithole country. Uh, I like... Uh, this is a Yahoo News' national correspondent, Alexander Nazaran. <clears throat> Scott Pru EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt earns a one-way ticket back to Oklahoma. He may want to travel coach. <laughs> Scott Pruitt is about to take the long flight home to Oklahoma, and it will probably be in coach class the embattled administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, known for his penchant for first-class travel, resigned on Thursday afternoon after yet another day of unflattering headlines and revelations. Uh, the very latest, and the straw that broke the camel's back, uh, apparently was allegations by R Virginia Democrat Representative Don Beyer uh, wondering if Pruitt was using a so-called shell corporation to hide income earned by his wife, Marilyn. But of course, like, like every silver lining, uh, there is a cloud. Environmental groups cheered Pruitt's resignation, uh, even though his successor, at least his temporary and probably his permanent successor, Andrew Wheeler, is an energy lobbyist who does not appear to believe that climate change is caused by human activity. So, uh, you know, guys, just as we saw with uh, <clears throat> Rex Tillerson being uh, replaced by uh, that horseman of the apocalypse, apocalypse, what it was his name, Mike Pompasass, and now, oh, you know, Pruitt's out and, and Wheeler's in. Uh, out with the old boss, uh, in with the new boss, same as the old boss, or so whatever that line is. Uh, it, it's it, as long as we have the big boss in the White House, it's just going to be musical chairs of these goddamn horsemen of the apocalypse. But, uh, but of course, you know, as many people would, would point out incorrectly, that we get rid of goddamn Donald Trump and someone just as bad uh, will step in to take his place. Uh, and, and someone almost as bad will, but nobody is as bad as Donald Trump. Uh, there is no human being on the planet uh, who is a bigger threat to uh, life on Earth than Donald Trump. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, we can at least have one, breathe one sigh of relief that uh, another one of these horsemen of the apocalypse uh, is gone uh, before the next one takes his place. But I want to thank uh, Sister Sandy for sending me this story coming from UCLA, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> Hallelujah. Climate change 
is making it harder for couples to conceive. Hallelujah. UCLA research finds warming temperatures have a negative effect on fertility and birth rates. Uh, yeah, when I first read this, I started thinking, oh yeah, India, uh, Pakistan, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, I, I'm seeing a really big effect on, uh, on heat waves and birth rates. What the fuck? Uh, anyway, they, in the very last sentence of the story, they get this. So, let's uh, celebrate the good news. According to research by UCLA environmental economist, environmental economist Alan Barica. Yes, a UCLA environmental economist. Uh, there you go, Alan Barica. Hot weather reduces chances of getting pregnant and the problem is expected to get worse because of global warming or the solution is expected to get better because of global warming. This is Mother Nature bringing out her broom. This is what James Gaia has been talking about for years that global warming is literally Mother Nature getting a fever. And she is going to figure out ways, uh, Gaia is going to figure out ways to eradicate this uh, virus on the planet by turning up the heat, which is what fevers do. Uh, so good for you, Gaia. Uh, of course, the question is how many other uh, Ga of our fellow Gaians are, how many of their birth rates are going to be declining? Um, after noticing that August and September, nine months after the coldest part of the year, are two of the busiest months for births in the U.S. Of course, you're talking, I was... Uh, I am a Christmas Eve baby, ho, ho, ho. My daddy's uh, Santa Claus, I think that has a lot to do. Anyway, I'm getting off track here as I tend to do. Uh, <clears throat> yes, after noticing that August and September are two of the, hot, two of the busiest months for births in the U.S., Bereka, a member of the UCLA Institute of the Environment and Sustainability. Environment and Sustainability. Poured through 80 years of US, of U.S. birth data looking for trends. Uh, and his study found that high temperatures have a significant negative effect on fertility and birth rates. And the research projects that as climate change drives temperatures up and increases the number and severity of heat waves, getting pregnant may become harder than ever. And if you think it's because people fuck less uh, in hot weather, <coughs> again, go over there to India and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa to, uh, to dispel that myth. There is no research that uh, backs it up. It looks like rather the pattern is likely due to heat's effect on male fertility as studies show that sperm production falls in hot weather. Uh, the reduction in fertility occurred across all regions of the U.S. Yes, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so, uh, see, it's, anyway, some environmentalist might be tempted to read the findings as good news. 
It's the best news I've read since Scott Pruitt resigning and those lions eating those uh, those poachers. But I'm not an environmentalist. I'm an eco-Nazi. Any eco-Nazi with a fucking brain will celebrate these findings as great news, knowing that humans cause carbon emissions and that lower birth rates will limit population growth, which in turn could slow climate change. But clueless fucking moron, UCLA, what is he, an environmental uh, economist working for the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability, rejects the notion. Hmm, re Baraka rejects that crazy idea that fewer humans on the planet means fewer carbon emissions. Quote, there are much more effective ways to reduce the birth rate on the planet. Yeah, you clueless motherfucker, like uh, sterilizing every goddamn baby born on this planet. That's one way to do it. Providing women with economic opportunities and access to birth control have a much bigger effect on the birth rate. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, guys, I uh, don't don't get me wrong. I absolutely am cheering on. Uh, providing women with economic opportunities and access to birth control, uh, but anything we can do, anything that we uh, voluntarily or Gaia uh, involuntarily, as far as we're concerned, every single uh, human being that, that uh, is being kept from being born uh, on this planet is good news. I don't care what the fuck the method is. You know, uh, bring on, uh, bring it on anyway. And, 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 I, and I love this one. This is where this article really goes off the rails. You know, Sandy, when she, when she uh, sent me this story, she said, Hambone, it's much worse than, it's much, like it's much worse than we thought. I didn't understand what she was talking about till I got down to this part of the story where it really goes off the rails w w with uh, this statement this absurd fucking statement directly from the Matrix. <clears throat> While much attention has been paid to overpopulation worldwide, declining birth rates and underpopulation, under under declining birth rates and underpopulations are looming threats, looming threats in the United States, Western Europe, and Japan. That was bullshit. No, uh, declining birth rates and underpopulation are the single best news. Uh, is, is this motherfucker an environment? He's not an economic environmentalist. He is an environmentalist, uh, environmental economist. Uh, yes, declining birth rates are a threat to the global industrial economy, which is 100% dependent on an, on an ever-growing uh, population. This is why this whole fucking uh, conspirator shit about the New World Order's depopulation agenda is unadulterated horseshit. There would be no global industrial economy if we had, like the Georgia Guidestones recommends, 500 million people on this planet. It would put an end 
to the global industrial economy, which is the heat engine that is fueling the collapse of this planet. While these clueless motherfuckers going around in their little goddamn UCLA institutes of uh, whatever it is, environment and sustainability, calling declining birth rates a, a, a bad thing. I love this quote from this clueless fucking moron. I would like to, I would literally like to reach in here and slap this fucker across his face. Quote, population rates are already so low that we could not maintain a stable population were it not for immigrants, Baraka said. Oh my God, a stable population. There is nothing stable about the population of the United States. This is why Paul Ehrlich correctly says over and over again that the number one most overpopulated country on this planet is the United States, is the shithole country of the United States of America. When you put together the whole IPAT equation, we are the single most overpopulated country on this planet, bar none, underpopulation. But anyway, we, we have uh, one more piece of good news. Bereka also projects climate change will shift more births from spring to summer months, which would be more good news for the planet because it would be bad news for prenatal health. As women who give birth in August or September will be exposed to considerably more hot weather during uh, the third trimester. I, you know, my my mama uh, always talking about uh, carrying me around Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in the third trimester. That's what you get, mom, when you fuck Santa Claus. Anyway, we won't get into my mother's sex life. And then I love this last uh, little little sentence. Uh, temperature is just one of many things that affect fertility. Wow. Despite being hot, India and some sub-Saharan African nations still have high birth rates. No shit, Sherlock. So we got to go back to the drawing board, at least in India and Sub-Saharan Africa and Pakistan and Bangladesh and goddamn everywhere else. Uh, looks like more rain moving in, so I've got to take shelter to bring you this week's kind of skinny ecological meltdown roundup rant coming up in one minute. But anyway, one more time. We need all the good news we can get this week in the end times. Bye guys. Alright, little dog, it's getting ready to rain again. So we gotta get out of the rain. Man, look at this gorgeous, cloudy, rainy day. Bye guys.